Hi, in this video I want to show you um, some tips about how to polish your resume for tech jobs, um, mostly focused on SDEs. So I will use some uh, samples, some real samples of resumes that uh, actually worked and brought the interviews to the candidate, but obviously with fake names. This is um, just an example to illustrate the points and I'm not really trying to enforce it. You can obviously write your own uh, resume in your own way. Uh, this is just some tips from uh, experience. So, first of all, what's the difference between resume and a CV? Uh, the resume is a very short, like one or at most two pages document, while the CV is much more than that. It, uh, it's usually much more than two pages. Um, the resume is a dynamic document, and that means that um, it changes over time. Um, Today, my best points to add uh, in the experience section, for example, are A, B, C, but tomorrow they might be, for example, A, B, F. And uh, that's because it's about the best I am at right now. So it might change by time. But for the CV, it's not like that. It's static. It, it doesn't change. It's like a history book. Um, the other thing is about the resume is highly customizable based on the role or the company that you're applying to. So if I'm applying for to... Uh, for like three roles to different companies or even at the same company, I might have three different resumes uh, or three different applications for um, uh, three different versions of the resume for each. And uh, that's because each resume should be targeted to the role uh, and to the company that I'm applying for. But the CV is not like that. The CV is just like a history book. It will keep growing uh, and it will uh, be uh, uh, on a timely order, basically. So um, it will not change at all. Uh, it will just, you will just add on top of it. What you need for a tech uh, application or for a tech job is the resume, not the CV. Okay. So the resume properties. So I have, I summarize my tips in three main sections. Uh, some about the size of the resume, some about the structure of the resume, and some about the content of the resume. So let's start with the size. Remember that on average the recruiters spend about six seconds, only six seconds, on each resume. And that means that you only have six seconds to catch their attention. So the size is very, very important here. So um, try to fit everything in one page, at most two pages. Um, obviously reduce margins, that's one easy tip. Uh, you know how to do that with Word or other editors. Um, the other thing is don't add borders, um, because first they will overwhelm the, the document itself, they will confuse the, the uh, recruiter, and they will uh, just eat up the space. So don't use them. Uh, the other important thing is don't use, don't overuse the fonts and too much colors. Uh, this is very important because um, usually the companies, um, the, the recruiting part of the company, have some uh, software that converts the uh, online application to uh, uh, some format to some format that they uh, have, and usually this format is a plain, plain format, and that means that most of the uh, complicated formattings. Uh, or, ev or even uh, intermediate format formattings are not being converted correctly or at all. So try to keep the formatting very simple um, and very basic, like bold, underline, um, uh, some basic fonts. Uh, these are fine, but like 3D effects or um, some newly created fancy uh, fonts, those tr just avoid them. The other thing about the color, so for example, in, in, uh, look at this one. Don't try, don't try to highlight uh, a, a text with the color. And that's because you have to think about it black-white. Think about a recruiter. Most of the time, the recruiter doesn't really print your resume in a, uh, using a, a color printer, right? They, they usually print it in a black-white format. So um, if, you, um, um, if you don't use right colors or uh, bright colors, it will not show up correctly on a, or clearly on a uh, black-white uh, printing. Use a white background and uh, dark colors in, in for the fonts. Okay. The other thing is adjust the tabs and bullet points. Remember that the bullet points are usually by default at a specific space from the uh, edge of the paper. 
but you always can adjust them. Don't forget that. And obviously, use smaller fonts. Okay, so this was about the size. Now let's talk about the structure. So for the structure, you need to add uh, all or some of these uh, components to your resume. The name, the experience, the education, skills and certificates, honors and awards, and publications. So let's talk about the name first. Um, so this is a sample here. Uh, obviously, you put the name in the middle on the top, and that's the must thing. Uh, the first thing the recruiter should see out of those six seconds is your name and your contact information. So put the name on the top in the middle in a bold, big font. And then use a smaller font to add your um, email address and the phone number. Both of them are important. Uh, the email address is obviously the first thing that they will contact you with. And the phone number is for the uh, phone interviews. You can then add the um, uh, post uh, address or the mailing address and um, uh, your website or LinkedIn uh, link or all uh, those things, but don't add too many. Um, but add these ones in a smaller font. Really, no one cares about your uh, mailing address. No interviewer will show up at your door and ask for ask you questions. So um, the only when, the only time that you need the address is after getting the offer when they want to send the document. All of those things, so, and at that time you can always update them. So um, it's not a big deal uh, at this point. And then. Um, Picture is not needed, so you really don't have to have a picture here. Uh, don't put any information about birthday, age, relationship status, nationality, race, gender, uh, things like that. Um, one thing about the residency or the citizenship, uh, citizenship status is that if a company requires specific citizenship or residency status, then uh, that's an HR thing and they will uh, include that on the job that they posted. So this is not, the resume is not the place to, to add this information. Uh, the application itself will ask you if it's needed or not. So don't put it on the resume. Okay. Now about the experience. First of all, obviously, if you have job experience, industrial experience, add it there. And uh, one thing that I want to mention here is that um, if you don't have any experience, you, uh, you, you can use your project for it. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this later on. But remember that experience is very important here because you're applying for a real job, for a um, tech job in an industrial company. So experience should, should come the second thing. So if you have a current um, re relevant job, you can add that. For example, if you're working on a different company and you're trying to switch. Uh, or if you have an internship, remember that internship is a real industrial experience, and that's important, so add it there. If none of those uh, is something that you have, then uh, try to contribute in, in open source projects. There are so many open source projects online, you don't really need to do anything, just use your laptop and um, try to contribute. Uh, and that's actually a very good indication on your resume because it shows that you have the ability to understand others' codes, a code, and um, contribute to it, which is a, an essential thing for an SD. Uh, the other way is to, to participate in hackathons. Um, there are many hackathons online that you can participate. Um, so uh, that's another important thing on, on your resume. If none of that is available, then you can add your college course projects. You can always reward in a good way that, uh, uh, that shows your, uh, your um, strengths. So don't forget that college course projects are actually projects. And uh, finally, the side projects. So these are the projects that you yourself defined and uh, you um, deliver. Um, so let's take a look at an example here. So in this example, uh, as you see, uh, the name of the project comes first, and it's, it, it's bold, it has a different formatting than the rest, so that it shows this is the name. And on the other bullet point, we have another one. Uh, it also should have the location and the date for that project. And then at the beginning, it has a short uh, summary of what the project is about. Remember that the person who's reading your resume doesn't have any uh, information about that uh, project. So uh, try to uh, have that. In, try to have uh, some sentences that are generic and understandable. Don't use too much of 
um, details or um, information that not everyone uh, knows. And then um, after that, you, can, uh, you need to talk about your own role and uh, uh, what you've done uh, in the team, so, or what the team have done. So um, um, the other important thing is to use the numbers. So for example, here it says you work uh, 24 continuous hours. So this is, this is something that uh, is important because uh, it's uh, measurable. In a group of four, uh, so try to use as, as um, much numbers, as, as many numbers as possible. Don't uh, just overuse that. But um, uh, try to balance it. Um, the other thing uh, about the experience is that if the project is launched, mention the, the launch date because, for example, here this, it says this app is live since 2013. That means that you actually delivered the project. So this is important. Um, the other important thing is to tr try to show the uh, software design life cycle in your sentences. So, for example, here it says that uh, we were responsible to find and document system requirements, create use case and class diagrams, uh, um, look back to the customer to confirm design, implement, test, and all of those things. These are essential things in, a, in the software engineering. And if you use your words uh, in this way to, to indicate that you actually followed the um, software engineering um, design and principles, uh, it, it shows that you actually learned what you've, uh, you actually practice what you've learned in school. Okay. Um, the other thing to mention is that unless you've worked in one of the major well-known uh, companies, most, recru most recruiters don't really know the company you've worked or entered at. So instead of um, insisting on what a big cool company it was, highlight your work. Uh, the recruiters are really interested in knowing what you have done, uh, and um, they they don't really care about where you uh, where you're coming from. Um, the other um, tip is that if you have worked on a side project for your own, you can emphasize on either the impact, like for example, how many uh, how many people downloaded your app. Uh, or the challenges that you've overcome uh, to deliver the, that, for example, working system or project. Um, one other thing is that you can put under the experience is actually the TA experience. Um, but if uh, it's relevant. So, for example, if a person who TA'd for um, algorithms or data structure or like language, like programming language classes, things like that, th yes, they can they can put them there. Uh, but um, re rewarding them in the right way is very important. So this is an example. So the person uh, um, um, le led the the class for the programming in C. Sometimes the name of the course is actually very descriptive, so you don't really, to, really need to uh, explain what the course is. But if you think that the, the name was very mm, uh, specific, you can add a very short sentence. The other thing is that don't add the number of the course, because really, uh, and unless someone is from your school or um, just that major, nobody else knows what, what that number is. So don't uh, add that number. It's just useless information. And then the uh, institute or the university and the date that uh, you TA. Um, so again, remember to use uh, to use numbers. Um, so here I ran two programming labs uh, a week, uh, 35 students each, to help students with debugging and problem solving. This is important. Many TAs do that, right? But uh, what the recruiter wants to see is this debugging. That means that you actually are able to debug other people's code. And that's an essential um, um, component, an essential skill for an SDE. So remember to, to reward your um, TA experience in a way that meets the requirement of the role that you want. Okay. Now let's talk about the education. So for the education, 
um, you start this is just like an example uh, obviously you start for the with the most recent one and then you go back um, in time so the name of the uh, or the title of the um, um, education that you had and then the, the date and obviously the location if the uh, university or the institute is outside of the United States and you're applying from, uh, for inside the states then add the, the country as well but if it's inside the country you really don't need to add it um, so you need the degree itself uh, you really don't need the m uh, minor or major uh, the date the name and the location uh, don't include the GPA if it's less than um, 3.5 the reality is that the big four companies, or actually most of the big companies, don't really care about it. But if you're applying for other companies, they might. Um, so you can uh, put it there. Uh, one other thing that you can put under the education is the um, taking courses. Um, remember that you have to add only the relevant ones. So for example, um, if you're applying for SDE, software engineering, uh, design and theory of algorithms, data structures, disk structure, these are um, very relevant and you can definitely add them here. Don't add too many. Um, one tip here is that if you know which team or which group uh, you're um, uh, applying for, and if you know that that team is using a specific um, uh, skill, for example, or uh, they need uh, some requirements, try to add the relevant courses that you've taken uh, for that team. So, for example, if you know that the team is working on operating systems and you've taken the operating systems course, add it there. Skills and certificates. If you don't have certificates, just delete it and add on the skills. So, first tip, only relevant ones. Uh, for example, if you're an expert in Photoshop, this is not a skill that an SD really and desperately needs. So, don't add that. Second, don't add too many skills. Remember that these are supposed to be the ones that you excel at, not the ones that you just learn in 10 minutes on a YouTube channel. So, just add the, 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 the ones that are important and necessary. So, there are some... Um, some skills that are actually necessary for that specific role. For example, if, you, if you're applying for SDE, knowing the, um, some sort of version control, for example, Git, is actually a must. Because in real-world experience, you will have to work with uh, different people on the same software uh, in parallel. So you have to know how to uh, work with different versions of the software. Um, the, uh, another tip is about including the soft skills. Remember that we, you don't want to include cliché words. Uh, for example, having um, uh, presentation skills and management capabilities, this is somehow cliché, unless if you provide some proof, which my TA experience confirms. So this is a proof, uh, because uh, previously in, in your resume, you mentioned that you are a TA. So the reader actually can relate and understand this. Uh, remember that um, you have to try to include your skills in short interrelated sentences uh, and also mention the level of the skill. So for example here it says um, three months of industrial experience, five years of academic experience, basic knowledge of C and C++. This is important because if you overestimate your um, level of expertise in that skill, then uh, you will not do well in the interview. And that's because the interviewer will expect that level of expertise and uh, the questions will be at that level. And so um, they will expect high level answers. So even if your answer is correct, but if it's not at that level, you will be rejected. So integrity is the key here. Uh, the um, other thing to mention is that some uh, skills are default skills for many roles. For example, knowing how to work with Microsoft Word or Microsoft Outlook, uh, this is a default skill that everybody should know, um, like at least the basics, uh, about how, for example, to send and receive email. So don't include these ones. So if you look at um, this uh, example here, you see um, that uh, in, in this sentence, for example, being familiar with the Git in a Scrum-based environment, I did my best to achieve the most out of the teamwork. This is a sentence that is informative, and at the same time, it says that the, uh, the person is familiar with Git, with uh, Scrum, and um, they know how to do the teamwork. Uh, 
So you want the the word the sentences to be short and related and um, highlight those skills. Okay, honors and and awards. If you have any, you can add this section. Otherwise, just uh, don't add it. Uh, so for this one, uh, they have to be very short, just like a list, uh, and list them based on the importance. You can definitely list, list them based on the time, but remember that the recruiter will probably not look at all of them and probably just look at the first one. So if you have a one important thing, just put it there. Um, include the date and the location, just like what you see here. So we have the name, the title of the, uh, of the reward, and the, look, and the time. Uh, like the date and the location and if sponsored include the sponsor name so for example this is sponsored by a high company and uh, so we added the name of the uh, company as well and then if known include the size uh, of the pool so for example it says here it says out of 1000 applicants this is important because the recruiter, uh, this will like the sentence will catch the attention of the recruiter much easier if you say I got uh, this, like I, I won this uh, out of 1,000 applicants versus if you just say I won this. Okay, publications. So if you have a patent or if you're applying for research position, then you should definitely have this uh, section in your resume. And actually it should be very top, uh, like on the um, next to the experience if you're applying for research position. But if you're not applying for research position, then you don't need to have the, the publications. If you have space on your resume, that's fine, you can add them. But it's not going to be as important. Okay. Uh, the second, the third uh, part of the tips that I have is about the content of the uh, resume. Um, I talked about the content during this um, presentation. Um, so obviously we need it to be short and informative. It, it, uh, it, this is applicable to all of the uh, sections uh, of the resume. You also need to show what you offer, not what you want. This is very important. Look at this example. Seeking an SDE position with a progressive employer where I can contribute to the development of new technologies and work with bright, committed people. This is not what you offer really. This is what you want out of this uh, position or company. So this objective, don't include that. Avoid fillers and long sentences. Avoid negative sentences, sentences about others or previous um, companies. For example, uh, don't say that uh, in, in this project, I did all the work on my own because none of the teammates help and all of those negative things. Avoid being too humble or too assertive. So. Uh, don't be too humble because that means that you, you, you're not selling yourself well. And uh, on the other side, um, don't be too assertive. So one of the um, sample questions that most of the companies ask is uh, that on the scale of 0 to 10, uh, how, uh, how do you uh, um, estimate your expertise in, for example, Java? If you say 10, that's really unrealistic and too assertive. Whoever you are, you can't be 10. You can't be perfect at, at that language. So just be realistic. Uh, aside from the um, technical uh, skills, uh, you can also demonstrate the leadership skills in your sentences. Uh, TA is actually a very good place to highlight the soft skills. Just look at this uh, example for what we have uh, as, a TA, as a TA. So. This is uh, the name of the course that the person TA'd. Uh, look at uh, how um, she wrote about uh, this experience. I led three sections. Um, so as you see, this shows the leadership. I attended weekly staff meetings. So this, sh this shows the, uh, how organized she is. I initiated, st uh, stimulated, and directed class discussions. So this shows she has a very good communication skills because she knows how to direct the discussion uh, and lead people uh, in the discussion. Uh, I let students the, to think critically, solve problem, and code it. This one shows that she knows how to help the others to develop. And uh, the last one says uh, covered uh, other TA sessions in emergency cases. So that shows responsibility and ownership. Uh, she actually cares about the job. Okay, 
So I hope that uh, these tips help you polish your resume and happy job hunting.